With our scales so far, we've been working sequentially in a linear fashion, sounding one note at a time. But in fact, it's very common for music to sound notes at the same time. Just now when we were playing, Zach was playing chords on the piano. So this is what we're going to go on to look at now. But before we do, it's going to be important to recap the difference between our C major scale and our A Aeolian mode, the natural minor, the scale that we built from the sixth degree. So here we have our C major scale. And then if we start from the sixth degree of that scale and say this, play the same pool of notes, we get. Which we called our natural minor or the Aeolian mode. Right, remembering how God rest you merry gentlemen did sound different from the major scale, let's have a look at some important relationships within this. So looking at the natural minor scale, the A minor scale, looking from A to E. That's note, the tonic up to note number five. I can count tone, semitone, tone, tone. That would be three tones and one semitones. If I break that down into semitones, that will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven semitones. That's the sound of the seven semitones A to E. Now going back to the C major, if I do the same thing and start on the tonic C and go up to note number five, which is G, I get tone, tone, semitone, tone. The same except that the tone and semitone are in a different order. But again, I'm getting seven semitones. Let's hear those. There's so C to G. Semitones from C to G, and then from A to E. Right, so A and E to, and C to G both have the seven semitones. They're the same. That interval was called a fifth, and in fact, we can now give it a quality and say it's a perfect fifth. And note also that the two notes sound nice together. Now, going back to A, let's now have a look at A to C. This is note one to three, the interval of a third. Here we get a tone and a semitone, so that adds up to three semitones. However, if I start on C and go from C to its third note, which is E, I get two tones which adds up to four semitones. And there is the difference. The second one is the C major chord. And when you hear it, you'll probably find it's very natural to hear the major scale. La da 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 da. So there, looking again at our C major scale, we now isolate the three notes, C, E, and G, and then we stack them up vertically like this. And that is the C major triad. Now, there are other ways of writing this. If you play a lot of rock music or jazz, you're used to using something called a lead sheet where instead of writing the chords out with notation, as you can see here, we use chord symbols. There are several different chord symbols. So for C major, it could simply be shown with a capital C, like this, or C maj, abbreviated for C major, or a capital C and a capital M. All of those could be used in different kinds of music. Now going to the A minor, the A natural minor scale. Again, we'll do the same trick. We'll isolate the three notes of the A minor triad, so that's A, C, and E. And again, we'll stack them up vertically to show the A minor triad. And again, if you were using a lead sheet, this could be shown with an A min, short for minor, or A little m, or A with a minus sign that you'll find in jazz. 
So if we take 1, 3, 5 starting on C in the key of C major, we've got C, E, G. Now, we know that we've got seven semitones between the C and the G, so that's a perfect fifth. We've got four semitones between the C and the E, and that's a major third. Now, because this has got three notes, it's a triad. It's the simplest type of chord. And what we're going to say is that a triad that has a perfect fifth and a major third is a major triad. Let's start on D. We've got one, three, five. D, F, A. Now, again, we've got seven semitones between the D and the A, which gives us a perfect fifth. But this time we've only got three semitones between the D and the F. So this gives us a minor third. Again, because it's got three notes, we're going to say that this is a triad, but this time we have a perfect fifth and a minor third, so we have a minor triad. Let's move on to E again. We've got a perfect fifth between E and B, and our third this time is G, which is a minor third, so we get a minor triad. Move on to the fourth degree, in this case, which is F. We've got F, A, C, so we've got a perfect fifth. This time we've got a major third, so this is a major triad. G, B, D is built on the fifth. So we've got G to D, which is a perfect fifth, G to B, which is a major third. So in this case, we get a major triad. In each case, the name of the major triad is the same as the tonic. So this is the G major triad. If we go up to the sixth degree, we already know this one. This is uh, A, C, E. So we've got our perfect fifth, and then we've got our minor third. So we've got a minor triad, the A minor triad. Now the next one that we need to look at starts on B, and we get B, D, F. Now some of you already may be aware that that sounds different, but what we've got between B and F is actually only six semitones this time. So that's one semitone smaller than the perfect fifth. Now we actually call this a diminished fifth, and we're going to talk more about this next week. But we have a diminished fifth, and we've got a minor third. Now, a triad with a diminished fifth and a minor third is called a diminished triad. So it sounds different, uh, and it has a different structure to the rest of the chords within the key because of the diminished fifth. So again, if you're a keyboard player, try them for yourself now. Even if you're not, grab your keyboard app, or even have a look at a picture of a piano keyboard. So just so you can work out where the notes fall, how we're going to build the chords, and just think about the nature of the fifth and the nature of the third, and the quality, as we would say in music theory terms. And from that, you can determine which type of triad you would be able to play on each degree of this scale. So that last chord that Zach just showed us, the B diminished, looks like this in notation. And using lead sheet symbols, it could be written as this, a B with a little zero after it, or B dim, short for diminished. And what Zach's just shown us in this last segment are all the triads that we can derive from our C major scale. And here they all are again. And you can also find these in your handout, print them out and look at them, which you need to do because you should sit down at the piano and play through them. Just again, looking at them, we can see that there are three major chords, the C major, the F major, and the G major. So these three chords all have the same internal relationship between the three notes. And then we have three minor chords, the D minor, the E minor, and the A minor. And again, they have the same internal relationship with each other. And then we found this one other different chord, the B diminished chord, which will be important later. So that's three kinds of chords from one set of white notes.